As we set out to design these new clinical buildings, we were mindful of what Osler called the spirit of the place. The Johns Hopkins Hospital and the School of Medicine were the first to show that a place of innovative clinical care could be paired with research and teaching, all under one roof. The magic also involved the opportunity to work alongside those who strove for excellence and innovation regardless of their special medical interest. This union of excellence was perhaps best illustrated by the famous Blue Baby operation in 1944. An unlikely trio, a female pediatric cardiologist, Helen Talsic, a black surgical technician, Vivian Thomas, and an esteemed cardiac surgeon, Alfred Blaylock, had teamed up to devise and perform the operation which ushered in a new era in pediatric cardiology, and for that matter, a new era of cardiac surgery. This integration of medical disciplines could only happen where we walked the same halls and opened the same doors. We had learned over the last century that we are stronger together as one hospital, adult and pediatric, surgical and medical, rather than as separate buildings. So when we set out to design this new clinical building, we built two towers, but connected eight of those floors together, eight out of the 12 floors. The design of the new clinical home reflects not only the lessons of the past, but also the new demands of a rapidly evolving healthcare system. We believe these new buildings help us to reshape the way we practice medicine in two important ways. First and foremost, this new center is designed around the experience of the patients and their families, not the fleeting fads of individual medical specialties. Second, it has given us maximum flexibility to adapt to the new demands posed by the uncertain evolution of our healthcare system. The experience of the patients and their families was a unifying factor in the design. We turned to those who knew best, our patients and their families. We combined their hard-earned, often painful experiences and knowledge with the wisdoms of those who stood by their bedside, the staff we had. Years before we started construction of this building, we built a prototype floor on the, in the old children's center. We made no assumptions. We tried out variable sizes of rooms, different configurations. We looked at different types of floors and how they absorbed sound. We even looked at the ceiling tiles to make certain that not only did they absorb sound, but they didn't absorb bacteria and fungus. We monitored how a quiet paging system would change workflow, and we discarded large central nursing stations, which amplified the noise on the, each floor. We changed workflow, keeping the nurses near the patients, maximizing their efficiency. We repeatedly interrogated our families and our patients on what they wanted and what worked best for them. The lessons learned over four years on that experimental floor guided the design of all the inclination settings in the new buildings. Then there's the interior design, the decor and the art. Open spaces bathed in natural light appear not only in the lobbies, but at the end of each public hallway on all the different floors. The artwork plays a strategic role beyond aesthetics. It is here to stimulate the imagination while soothing and distracting the preoccupied mind. Shortly after move, moving in, I had the chance to tour with a member of our board through the clinical areas. He knew Hopkins well, but also had worked on our floors in the past. He said, how are you going to keep such a big space filled? It seems so empty. I smiled. We were at 95% occupancy that day, and his interpretation of a quiet environment was that we were empty. And 
the patients and their families have spoken. The Bloomberg Children's Center, our patient satisfaction scores went from uh, the bottom 25% in the old building to the top 10%. The parents, the patients had responded that we had done a better job of building a hospital around them. We are pushing the boundaries of clinical care and scientific innovation while allowing us to maximally be flexible to adapt to our new demands. Our two emergency rooms, adult and pediatrics, are separated by the most up-to-date radiology and surgical suites. We have proven that space can be adaptable to both children and adults without sacrificing the special needs of each. Our ICU rooms can become procedure or OR rooms within minutes to perform sophisticated procedures at the bedside. Our medical surgical floors can be transformed into intensive care rooms if needed. Radiology images and lab results can be brought to the bedside, and if we need to move patients, we can now do it privately, avoiding public spaces. As medicine changes, outpatient and inpatient distinctions will also change. The future demands that we minimize the inpatient duration of care, redefine these clinical settings, and bring them together in an uninterrupted system with not only the same information systems and physicians, but also the same staff. Three floors in the Bloomberg Children's Center have side-by-side -side outpatient and inpatient units with shared staff giving us the ability to begin to break down this art artificial separation of care. About three years ago, I had the honor of addressing our staff just before the new building uh, was open. Actually, we stood in that courtyard over there. I told them we had strived to build an environment worthy of their excellence and devotion to the care of our patients. Now, two years after moving in, I believe we can also say that this new environment has transformed the patient and the family experience and promises to adapt to whatever new changes may come. Remember the lesson of the first blue baby operation? Here is the story of the first scheduled surgery in the Bloomberg Children's Center. Here are the words of Duncan Scott's parents, Dan and Ellen. We found out before Duncan was born that he had a serious heart problem. Okay. Here we go back to the operating room and um, he was so little. But we were able to uh, bring him back and be with him until he uh, he, until he went under, which a lot of hospitals actually don't allow you to do. So Duncan is uh, nine months old, has uh, congenital heart disease, has a hole between his lower heart chambers. He's in congestive heart failure, he's failed to thrive, uh, he's had recurrent respiratory tract infections. Um, we found out <laughs> before Duncan was born that he had a serious heart problem that would require surgery. We thought because we were in a place that could not perform his surgery, uh, somebody would have to come from the mainland to Hawaii to do surgery. So we decided to come back to the East Coast. We immediately met with cardiology and scheduled tentative date of, for surgery in January. As we've seen last time. Actually doing things in the, in the, new, in the new facility was uh, turned out to be the right thing for us to, to have happen for, for him and our family. I think that the new pediatric cardiac unit within the Children's Hospital at Johns Hopkins is a change, it's a, a paradigm shift from what we had before, uh, where everything is streamlined and uh, it makes a big difference, whether it's an emergent case or an elective case. So for example, we have an operating room, which uh, is a dedicated pediatric cardiac surgery room. And within this room, we have uh, amazing technology. Everything that you can think about is just available at fingertips. In the case we did on Duncan, uh, we needed the echocardiographer to come into the room. Well, he was four floors down, and he was in the echo lab. And on a monitor, he saw exactly what I was doing. By the way, I did see. And so at that point, he knew exactly when he had to come up. We did not even have to call him. From the operating room, 
the patient gets transferred to a pediatric intensive care unit where there's a dedicated space, which is close by, is really around the corner. This is much more streamlined. It's easier for those who work within an environment like that. It's easier for the patient. It's easier for the families at every step of the way. Even the new PICU facility was a lot more accommodating to, to parents towards something like this. And as stressful as the surgery was and, and how he looked right after the surgery, you know, having both of us go home would have been a, a little bit more than I think we've been able to handle at that point. So I was researching hospitals before we before he was born, trying to figure out where would be the best place for him to have his surgery. And not even a week later, we were home and he has put his surgery behind him. Fully recovered. Uh, he no longer has heart disease. His heart is fully functioning. He's no longer on any heart medications that he was on for the first almost 10 months, 10 months of his yeah. life. I think that doing the first official case in the new clinical building at Johns Hopkins is all about beginnings. I think as clinicians, for us, it's, uh, it's an amazing environment. It is the beginning of a new era for us where we have basically all the technology we ever wanted at our fingertips. So this bear was waiting for us when we got there in the PICU. I didn't realize at the time that the number one on the bear and the number one Duncan's chest was written actually by Dr. Vicella um, because he was his first, the first surgery in the new hospital. For me, on a personal level, uh, what kind of beginning is this? Uh, you know, I came to the States 20 years ago from Italy, and for me to do a ribbon cutting operation at Hopkins is an amazing privilege.